So here the automaton is taken apart. I've got the subassembly, the major parts of it here, and I'll go through each one. This is the base with the Scotch yoke carriage. And here we have the spring motor, and it drives a little crank. And this is the art part of this. It's the mechanism of the face and all the various features. And you crank this up, and it tightens this mainspring, and then that, when you let it loose, uh, in turn drives this little shaft right here. So, so this spring motor is mounted onto this red plate here. Right? And when you crank this thing up, uh, it there's my little drive spindle right there coming through that red plate. The white piece is just a wooden disc. And then my little pin here that comes off the wheel is going to be the thing that drives the whole mechanism. So that just goes on the shaft like this. And we'll tighten it down here. And wind it up and you can see it go around here. Now this may not look like a Scotch yoke, but that's what it is. Um, if you go online, you'll find a hundred different cartoons of these. There's all kinds of different ways to make a Scotch yoke. But fundamentally, what you're doing is you're taking a rotating motion and you're making it into a back and forth motion. And that brass pin you saw will ride between these two pieces of wood. And as it goes around, it just takes this back and forth. So now we can go ahead and put our motor onto the base here. And I've got these two brass rods. This is my way of getting the motion to go back and forth. There's any number of ways you could do this. And this is probably more complicated than it needs to be. But I think it looks kind of cool. So there you go, you've got that uh, round wooden white wheel that's going around and it's producing this back and forth motion of this yoke carriage. It makes a nice racket, doesn't and it? And I've got these two eyeballs here and they pivot on these brass uh, rods here. They're one eighth of an inch in diameter. Now I put those on washers when I install them so that when they go back and forth, they don't have a lot of friction at the joint. That reduces the amount of friction. You want to do everything you can to reduce the amount of friction that goes back to the motor. So there's the two eyeballs, right, like that. Now for my nose, I've just got a piece of walnut here, and uh, that's on a piece of 3 16 brass. You could probably use a wooden dowel, it would be just fine. And so the way that I've got that pivoting, I've got a pin here, go through, and it's sort of a hinge for this nose to ride back and forth on like that. You can see where it comes through the back there. But I just have a little wire uh, soldered onto this other piece here and those go through these holes like this. And it ties all three of these parts together. And so you go back and forth with this and it moves the nose and the eyes at the same time. Little antenna things are actually they actually have a double purpose they hold the top part of the head down like that and so I can kind of push them in there and it kind of locks the whole thing together the aliens head has a couple of dowels that I use to mount it to the base okay so here we go let's see how she works Thank you.